and inheritance taxes were either drastically lowered or abolished, just as they've been the last 10 years in America. In Germany, between 1934 and 1940, the average net income of corporate businessmen rose by 46%. <clears throat> Enterprises that were floundering were refloated with state bonds. They were recapitalized out of the state treasury, and they were returned to private control when solvent. So you see, these are people who say socialism doesn't work, but when capitalist businesses start to fail, they go socialist. They take the money out of the public treasure and refloat these businesses. Does that sound familiar to you people who are worrying about the S&L bailout? With numerous enterprises, the state guaranteed a return on the capital invested. They guaranteed a return and assumed all the risk of investment losses. So the investor, the rich investor, didn't have to worry about any losses, and if, it, if his business didn't do well, he'd get the money from the state treasury in any way. This is why the capitalists did like fascism. This, however, did not really bring a final solution. I mean, what the fascist state is, it attempts a final solution to the problem of class conflict. It obliterates the demands of the working class and the democratic forms that allow workers some room for an organized defense of their interests. But this final solution proves very far from final. In fascist Italy and Germany, industrial sabotage and sporadic wildcat strikes continued, inflation increased, whole sectors of the economy remained stagnant, there was widespread corruption, mismanagement, underemployment, vital social services deteriorated, but profits climbed. The profits went up, yes, sir. The gestures made on behalf of the needy were, uh, were, were pitiful. I mean, what the Nazis used to do is go around in the working class areas and collect alms, so they taxed the poor to give money to the still poorer, as Franz Schumann once said. The, uh, the Italian economy remained in a troubled, stagnant condition right up to the Second World War. In Germany, thanks to the booming armaments industry, the standard of living, at least most notably the unemployment problem, would have been so bad that standard of living improved a little bit, but it never even reached, by the way, it never even reached what it was in 1933 under the Weimar Republic. I mean, it never reached 1928 levels. So even under the Weimar Republic, for all its troubles, the levels of food, textile, and other areas of consumption and production were much better than ever achieved under Nazi Germany. Anyone interested in reading more about fascism, I would uh, direct you to uh, a, a very fine book called, by Daniel Gurin, G-U-E-R-I-N, called uh, Fascism and Big Business. Uh, the writings of Franz Neumann are also worth looking at. Now, my references uh, for a couple of, on a couple of occasions here, I've made references to Reagan and Reaganism. I didn't mean to imply that Reagan was a fascist. Uh, in fact, uh, the, quite the opposite. I, mean, I meant to point out that in the American context, Reaganism uh, met the same crisis that was going on, uh, or a, a similar crisis, it wasn't quite the same, but uh, accomplished the same things within the existing framework, of the political framework of the existing political system. Uh, he broke unions, but he didn't use death squads and terror squads. He broke them using uh, uh, consultation uh, or corporations, advisory corporations, spending hundreds of millions of dollars uh, showing companies how to break unions. They broke unions by instituting one of the most restrictive and prohibitive and difficult laws, the Taft-Hartley law, that went, goes back to... 19, 1940s, uh, which make union organizing in America so very difficult. They've uh, tried a number of times to limit our constitutional rights, the rights of free speech, the right to, of government accountability. Uh, they've cut inheritance taxes. They've cut the capital gains taxes. They've cut corporate taxes. They've abolished the progressive income tax. These are the accomplishments of the Ronald Reagan administration. While everyone talked about what a nitwit and a dingbat and a fool he was, Ronald Reagan did some very successful and brilliant things for his class. He rolled back the social democracy that had been developing in the late 60s and through the 70s. He cut back undermined human services. He staffed agencies and courts with people of, in government who do not believe in government and do not even carry out the programs that Congress voted in. So within the American context, he's done quite a few things short of, of course, short of what Hitler and Mussolini did as a final solution. And today I would also point out that in capitalist democracies in Western Europe, 
and in the United States, the security forces have that same double standard that we discovered in Italy and in the Weimar Republic in Germany. Namely, they look the other way toward violence from the right or seem to do very little or seem uh, so uh, seldom able to capture the perpetrators, unless the perpetrators are so crazy as to attack and kill police themselves, then they go after them. But on the left, there's a constant surveillance, harassment, and in fact, sometimes outright murder. One can think of the uh, systematic murder of the Black Panther Party, something like 30 of them killed in coordinated police attacks in cities throughout America. Or one can think of what's going on in West Germany, Italy, Belgium, Portugal today, where people on the left are being thrown in jail for astronomical sentences, uh, while terrorists on the right seem to uh, get by and get away with murder. Well, this is what we have to look at and we have to understand that fascism is not just another ism out there. It's not just an aberration. It has a very rational side to it. It's a rational, functional uh, form and it can take diluted forms and its propensities, its uh, proclivities can exist even in the democratic state. That is, within that state, those police powers and those state powers can manifest um, <clears throat> some of the very same symptoms and all the worst attributes that you might find in a Nazi Germany or fascist Italy. Don't take my word for it, just ask the CIA. Thank you. This is Michael Parenti with some real history.